My name's Dave Ratt, and uh, I don't know about you, but I like to take things apart um, and see what's inside. Uh, today I've got um, three wedges here, a DMB Audio-Technic M2 wedge, an L Acoustics 115 XT High Q, and an EAW Micro Wedge 15. Um, they're all great wedges in their own right, and they all have a different set of assets and detriments, um, like anything. Uh, so it's all about picking the right tool for the job, and uh, knowing what's inside may give you a little more insight uh, when you're making that selection. Okay, we've got the three different angles. We've got a steepest angle, intermediate angle, a shallowest angle. If you don't have one of these, uh, Makita 18 bolt screw guns, impact drivers, uh, get one. They are um, awesome. Let's see what we got here. Come on. Alright, and there we go. That's what the inside of a DMB looks like. Pretty impressive there. And um, there's the sexy insides of an L Acoustics 115. And the inside of a micro wedge. Um, and my dog Bones. Okay, so what we've got here, you can see we've got a double 12 um, ports up here next to the uh, compression driver. Looks like a 1.4, 1.5 inch compression driver uh, with an oval horn. Uh, on the L Acoustics, we've got a single 15 uh, concentrically mounted horn um, giving the coax some more dispersion control. Uh, three ports around the outside here. Uh, I guess I didn't need a fourth one. And the Microwedge 15. We've got the um, coax with the dust cap covering. It's actually using the cone as the horn. Uh, on both the L Acoustics and Microwedge, you'll notice foam coming down. Um, the sides here, while designing, that was definitely very interesting to see how much effect um, these slight little rails had upon the sound. The high end would come, hit that rail, and cause it a reflection, which made it uh, less stable feedback-wise. So these were actually quite critical. So let's go take a look at this stuff up close. Um, here's the um, 18 sound product. Um, as you can see, there's six screws that mount the um, surround of this. Um, this comes out of the MicroWedge 15. It's a, uh, three inch voice coil diaphragm. There's the L acoustics. You can see the tangential surround, metallic tangential, sur tangential surround. And on the DMB, uh, you can see that it's got a clear plastic surround on it. Uh, voice coils, this, uh, you can probably see that. Just begin to make out the um, uh, three inch voice coil in there side of the 12, up close in the 12. It's got a coating on it, waterproof, that's cool. That's gonna deal well with um, the environment. Uh, I don't necessarily wanna flip this over with this diaphragm out. Um, here you can see again, we've got a three inch voice coil on the um, 15 here. On the micro wedge 15, you can see that we have a Four inch voice coil here. I don't know if you can make it out. How thick this um, side thing is. Um, you can see the button magnets on the um, the Neo buttons here, and this is the Neo ring. Ventilation on these on the side. You can see ventilation comes out here. It just vents the gap. Uh, here, the ventilation is these slots. And on this one, the ventilation is through the rear. Since it's not a coax, um, it can vent out the rear. The coaxes have the additional challenge of finding a way to vent the uh, voice coil, the area under the dome uh, that 
that chamber, when this moves back, air has to leave that area somehow. And um, uh, typically, you would vent that out the back on any ring magnet structure. Uh, with a coax, you've got a driver there. You can't do that. So they'll vent it out the sides here. Um, I'll find some way to let that air release or else it um, causes problems. Let's take a look inside. Uh, we got a crossover in there. I believe that's the high frequency, uh, separate high frequency, and that's the low frequency crossover there. There's a circuit board for the switch. Uh, you can see some, uh, this is like cotton, a little soft cotton. Here's a, a kind of a polyester feeling. Um, soft uh, filler and here you can see we've got some foam I'll put this back together and we'll see what else we can figure out but uh, don't for a second think that you can call up uh, BNC or whoever makes these products and end up with the same product uh, the same uh, part number that ends up in these things I know from working with EAW on this one uh, we started with five different uh, contenders, narrowed it down, picked the best of those five, then we started changing cones, then we started changing coatings and uh, put in soaking it in waterproof chemicals in order to make sure this thing was uh, uh, dealt with it, changing the type of fiber and the dust cap and the thickness and the diaphragm magnet strengths and uh, types of magnets. Uh, the amount of variables involved in the driver selection and then you end up with this uh, final that is completely different than anything that uh, is on the market and there are no holds barred as far as the depth of the gap, the width of the gap, the copper coil, the uh, aluminum coil, how it's wound, um, adhesive changes, uh, the variables are mind-boggling in going into um, these designs and um, you know how you combine all these complex factors and come up with you know a viable product that has an asset um, a set of assets that is desirable for the um, quite demanding pro touring market is uh, an extreme challenge as you can see the horn mouth on that is pretty good size horn mouth on this it's going to give uh, these two products some um, uh, dispersion control, kind of a more in your face, uh, high end sound, get the high frequency uh, energy, more concentrated in the uh, region in front of the wedge. This uses the cone, um, you can't see it below, but it's flaring out. Um, it's a much quicker uh, flare on this. Uh, the high frequency energy is going to be uh, dispersed over a wider zone, less directional. There's advantages to you know, both ways of doing this. Um, the advantage of this, obviously, is you've got a, a nice good size horn, a lot of gain. The disadvantage here is that um, when you stand out at this, uh, in front of it, when you're equidistant from all three sources, um, they're all going to combine up and have a certain sonic characteristic. As you move off to the side, you become closer to this and farther from that and the way that they combine uh, will change a bit, which uh, will cause feedback instabilities. It's kind of a price you have to pay for having a separate setup. They are fairly close, <coughs> um, but those variations will manifest themselves in the, uh, the real world. Without the horn at all, the advantage is you don't get the variation. No matter where you are, you're always equidistant or very close. The variation is uh, reduced even further. Uh, so there's an asset and a detriment to that. Uh, this is going to give you more feedback stability. Uh, these two are going to give you more high frequency um, volume and energy on axis. Uh, this is going to have wider dispersion, narrower dispersion. Again, picking the right tool for the job. And the only other thing I'd say is if you have wood floors, uh, the DMB makes black marks all over it when you drag them around. And these two don't. Um, all right, I'll put these back together. Hope that was interesting enough. Um, and I'll try and figure out another thing to videotape.